What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out 5 tips and tricks on how to optimize your gaming PC to get the best possible gameplay experience, and this video is sponsored by Corsair and Nvidia. In my build over at this setup, we have a nice RTX 3080 Ti inside our Corsair 1 i300 build. So, like I said, 5 tips and tricks to get your gaming PC fully optimized. First up is going to be Nvidia Reflex. And NVIDIA Reflex is all the rage right now amongst the esports community. It supports games like Valorant, Fortnite, Apex Legends, just to name a few. And Reflex is the most effective method at reducing system latency while giving you better responsiveness in your game. That means you can aim better and be more effective essentially, since Reflex is gonna show you a more accurate rendering of your opponent's location. So obviously there's numerous factors at play when it comes to your system latency when you're gaming. Your CPU will then queue up frames in a render queue, so your GPU could immediately push it out and display those frames. And with Reflex on, it helps reduce any of that frame queuing, so it's eliminating that whole extra step and helps your CPU and GPU stay in sync. And as a result, cuts down latency. You can check for the compatible games to see if the ones you play have this, but you'll see the NVIDIA Reflex setting in the game menu where you can enable it. Reflex is available with GeForce 900 series GPUs and newer. You can also measure system latency with Reflex compatible displays and mice. And say your favorite game isn't Reflex enabled, there is an alternative method you could use. It's a low latency mode, and this can be enabled in the NVIDIA control panel. Now this is not as effective as Reflex, but it will still help reduce latency by up to 33%, which is obviously better than not having it enabled at all. To turn this on, just right click on your desktop and click NVIDIA control panel or search for it in the menu. On the left side, navigate to manage 3D settings, then scroll down through the global settings and find low latency mode. Then select ultra from the drop down menu and there you go. Now kicking off tip number two today is for your physical display settings. There's a few things we're going to go over here, but first up, you would not believe how many times I hear stories about people buying a 144 hertz or a 240 hertz monitor, for example, and they think they're playing at that refresh rate, but this entire time they're playing at 60 because they don't know out of the box, you have to actually change it manually to be 144 or 240 hertz, whatever the maximum refresh rate is for your monitor. So if you're one of those people and your heart just sank to your stomach because you didn't know you have to change it manually, I'll show you how. It's very, very simple as well. On your desktop, just right click and enter the display settings menu. From there, scroll down to advanced display settings, which will get you into your individual monitor settings. From there, just hit the drop down menu for choose a refresh rate and pick the highest possible refresh rate that your monitor is capable of. It's that simple. Now, if you are gaming at a higher refresh rate, the next tip I'm gonna give you here, again, to get the best possible experience while you're gaming, is to cap your maximum frame rate. This is gonna help reduce input lag while gaming. So I recommend capping your frame rate in the NVIDIA control panel. You can also do this separately as some games have it built in, or you can use any of the multiple third-party software offerings out there that do this as well. But I'm just gonna show you how to do it natively in NVIDIA control panel. Enter the manage 3D settings tab. Then under global settings menu yet again, you'll see maximum frame rate settings. The rule of thumb has always been to cap it at around three FPS below your monitor's maximum refresh rate. So if it's, you know, 144, do 141. If it's 240, do 237 and so on. Another benefit of this is so that you're not just rendering unnecessary frames, causing your GPU not only run harder than it needs to, but if you're gaming at 144 hertz, but your GPU is getting you, you know, around 200 FPS in game, you're gonna start to then introduce screen tearing. So you definitely wanna eliminate that. So now with just those two quick adjustments, not only can you now game at a higher FPS, but you're gonna have the slight edge in terms of reduced input lag. Tip number three today is gonna to be to optimize your sound settings when gaming. Sound is extremely important when gaming, and in fact, I'd argue that it's one of the most important aspects that could directly affect your gameplay performance. Because if you don't have that situational awareness, you know, if you can't pinpoint where gunshots are coming from or where footsteps are coming from, odds are you're dead. So first up, I always recommend checking your in-game audio settings because not a lot of people know this, but some games actually have different sound settings built in to fine tune to your setup scenario. Uh, just for example, real quick, I know like in Battlefield 5, they have settings where they're using headphones or speakers, surround sound or night mode, all different settings that will directly change how the audio actually sounds to you. Same thing goes for like Modern Warfare that has a ton of audio settings for like a home theater setup, a midnight mode. They have modes for boosting highs, boosting lows. So I definitely recommend just checking out whatever your favorite game that you usually play is 
Go to the sound settings, which you probably haven't done, and see if they have these sort of preset audio effects built in. Now, another thing I wanna talk about that I think is absolutely fantastic for audio, and it's something that I personally use and just cannot get enough of it, that's actually gonna be SteelSeries Sonar, which is a free program you can download, and it is extremely powerful. It's probably worthy of its own video, honestly. But inside, it has a 10-band parametric EQ that you can apply to your entire system, meaning you can now EQ your games, EQ your favorite music, movies, literally anything. And like I said, it's all free, which is insane. Inside Sonar, you have a really nicely detailed and easy to use sound spectrum that you can adjust and mess with to tailor how your game sounds to you and how you want it to sound, really. This lets you do things like reduce certain frequencies in game so you can hear footsteps better or amplify certain sounds to get that immersion, like, you know, bumping the sub bass for enhanced explosions. They also have a spatial surround sound mode you can mess with. And built in, they also have presets for certain games as well. If you don't want to mess around and stuff with the EQs, you can just choose one of those pre-made ones that are configured for specific titles. So you're getting the best possible competitive edge in terms of audio in that game. The crazy thing is it's not just limited to your system settings. They have the same thing for your chat audio, your microphone audio. They have an entire built-in mixer. So if you're a streamer, you can obviously see the benefits this now provides to you. But even if you're not, like I said, if you're strictly watching movies on here for like a home theater PC or something like that, whether you do game, you use this for listening to music and stuff. Sonar is incredibly powerful. As you see, there is so much in there free to use. I absolutely love it. I've used it for like two months now and it is great. Highly, highly recommend. Again, sound is so important when you're gaming. Rolling on over now to tip number four is going to be for your mouse optimization. So while we just talked about sound being one of the more important aspect of your overall gameplay, now the mouse is probably the most important peripheral to your setup. And it's obvious that the thing acting as an extension of your hand pretty much is going to directly re relate to your performance in games. You're going to want to optimize your mouse to fine tune it and make it the most comfortable and natural to you. So first, depending on what mouse you use, obviously, the process to go about this will then vary, but you will need to use your mouse's software to adjust the DPI and things like that. But before all that, the first thing you should do is go to your PC mouse settings and click additional mouse properties. Then go to pointer options and make sure the enhanced pointer precision is turned off. And I believe by default it's turned on. And this is just a really dumb setting. It tries to adjust the speed of your mouse for you, which doesn't give you a true one-to-one -one aim. And with this, it's never going to let you be consistent with your aim because the PC is, quote, enhancing the speed for you. So yeah, definitely turn this off. But now the most important aspect of dialing in your mouse settings is finding the perfect DPI for you. The dots per inch you set your mouse speed to move in relation to how much you physically are moving the mouse itself. Now, again, with most modern mice, think of it like a camera, if you will. You know how most cameras have a native ISO? Well, so does your mouse in an abstract kind of way when it comes to finding the best DPI to give you a lower input lag. And 1600 DPI seems to be that native ISO, that sweet spot. With increasing your DPI in your software, you lower the input latency 5 to 10 milliseconds as it's being reported to your PC. The key here is to adjust and counteract that 1600 DPI by adjusting your in-game sensitivity. So for example, say you typically game at 800 DPI, and now you're hearing that you should be gaming at 1600 DPI. Well, that's twice as fast. And maybe you don't want to game twice as fast, it's going to throw you off a lot, right? But in your in-game settings, lowering the sensitivity to 50% is the same thing as 800 DPI in-game. Do you get what I mean by this? You're still getting the same speed in-game, but now making this adjustment is going to get you less overall latency. When it comes to competitive gaming online, anything to give you that edge is going to help. And then our fifth tip for today is going to be enabling Windows Game Mode. So on your settings, just search game, you'll see Game Mode and toggle it on. Game Mode essentially kills any intensive background tasks or programs that's taking up valuable system resources that you could otherwise be putting towards your game. So for example, I know a lot of times with me, like my gaming and editing PC is the same. So 
I'll forget that when I'm gaming, I have like something with uh, Adobe running in the background or wallpaper engines going. I forgot to disable all that. And I'll notice in game that it's a little bit more sluggish because I had these intensive tasks, you know, taking up RAM and stuff in the background. Now this won't make a huge difference for most modern games. Like you're not gonna be getting 30 extra FPS or anything. Most of the time it'll be like five frames. But I mean, if you're prone to heavy background task usage or you're just using a low RAM system without much overhead for games, game mode could definitely be useful. So all right guys, that'll wrap it up for five tips and tricks on how to optimize your PC to get the best overall gaming experience sponsored by NVIDIA. If you wanna check it out, if you wanna learn more about Reflex or anything I showed off today, I'll have a link for you in the description down below. If you liked this video, you thought it was useful, give it a big thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed, have a good day.